And so, good evening, good evening, good evening. We are back again. Lee Gunner back in the building, baby. And Lee Gunner's feeling great. After a whole week, pretty much, six, six days of feeling in the mud. And when I say in the mud, I was feeling in the mud. Literally, I've lost five kilos in a week. Barely been able to eat. I've been bed bound for most of it. And uh, stomach cramp level 100, toothache level 100. But it appears I am back. Having triggered top gooners for not celebrating the goal at the weekend. Uh, all of the dregs of society ended up in my notifications. Well done. Well done, guys and girls. Well done. Fully grown adults talking about my kids, talking about my missus, et cetera, et cetera. Threats of violence. <laughs> it's what? Classy Arsenal. Um, all pandering down to, oh, mental health matters, unless it's somebody like Lee Gunner. Um, but it is what it is. Kind, genuine people. Uh, but anyway, uh, we've rattled them again by uh, asking what phase Uzi, Unai Emery's in. And all they come back with is, oh, but he's second, um, two points off. No, sorry, he's fourth. But he's fourth. Yeah, sarcasm is lost on thick people, I can't lie. Uh, but anyway, we're not here to talk about top gooners uh, or top uh, red super fans or whatever. Uh, we are here uh, to talk about Victor Osserman and Ivan Tony. And you're going to get spam, spam, spam. I've got a week's worth of videos to make up for because the last week I've done barely anything. Um, so over the next uh, week or so, between now and the end of the month, uh, we will be spamming videos left, right and centre, as well as the usual streams as well, people. Uh, I will be doing a watch along tonight for the Wolves game against Fulham. I will have some transfer videos out on that channel as well. Um, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled on Lee React. Make sure you get sub into this channel as well. Road to 90k is on. And I'll have plenty more videos out on here about Thomas Party, um, Douglas Louise. I've got one recorded already. So they'll be dropping over the next um, 12 to 24 hours, as well as the podcast tonight with Kenny and Jez. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Quarter past six UK time. Anyway, who are we picking, people? Victor Osserman? Or Ivan Tony, because this Victor Osserman is uh, now flavor of the month again. And I've never really got the hype, I can't lie. I've never really got the hype. Although, again, I'm not one that claims to sit and watch Italian league football every week. So if you are an Italian league expert, um, then feel free to let me know what the situation is with this guy. I mean, if we're going purely off of statistics, which is not, not something I like doing, um, but if we are going to go purely off of statistics, he scored six goals in the league out of nine this season, nine games. Uh, he has, however, only played 647 minutes in the league. So, yeah, one assist. Uh, Champions League, two games, one assist. So six and two out of 11 games, 827 minutes of football. Um, he missed out on both the Union Berlin games with a muscle injury, hamstring. Um that kept him out of an international friendly against Mozambique in October. Also kept him out of one, two, three, four games in the league as well. Started 11 out of nine games in the league, substituted on in two. So, listen, I don't really, I don't really know. Listen, the price tag that's being banded around is just eye-watering. Let's just be real with it. Like, we're talking like 100 plus million quid, 120 million quid. And for me, I just look at that and I think like, Whilst he may come in and may be great, he may be. Who knows? We never know. Listen, it's always a risk signing a player, whether they're in the league or not. But me personally, I'd rather, if it is around the £120 million mark, I would rather go and spend that on Ivan Tony and one other. So go and get a midfielder. I think it's quite clear we need another midfielder. We've got Jorginho strolling around, El Nenny doing up bench. We've got um, 29... Um, yeah, cool. He scored. Whoopee. Well done. Um, but he's not been great. We've got Smith Rowe can never get a game because he's never fit. Fabio Vieira's hit and miss. Never really rips up any trees at Arsenal. Uh, the only one who's doing anything really is Declan Rice. And again, I've said this many times. Is he Has he been that great? Or is it just that the bar is so low with the rest of them that he always looks like he's doing great? Listen, I think he's done really well. But has he been the 9 out of 10 that we're all saying he has been, or is it just that he looks like a 9 out of 10 because the rest are a 1 out of 10 or a 2 or a 3 out of 10? And I think it's probably the latter, if I'm honest. Now, that's not a diss on Rice, because I like Rice. I wanted Rice at Arsenal, and I think he's a top player. But 
I think that we haven't really seen the best of our midfield yet. Gibraltar guard's been missing pretty much every game he's played. And again, at the weekend, he did absolutely F all. So I do feel we need a midfielder. And I think we need a midfielder that complements Rice. Yeah, who that is, I don't know. We'll come back to that on another video. But there's plenty of midfielders out there. Um, but in terms of uh, Osterman, I'm not convinced 120 million quid, mate. I'm sorry, I'm not. If Chelsea are stupid enough to go and pay that money for him, let him crack on. He's going to be 25 next month. Um, let's have a look at his total career stats. Let's have a look at his career stats for all you statisticians. Uh, 112 Napoli appearances, 65 goals, uh, 16 assists. Lille, 38 games, 18 goals, 6 assists. So, not bad, not bad. It's not bad, is it? But again, do you get that much time and space in the Premier League compared to some of these other leagues? A lot of these other leagues, when I do watch them, they all play a high line. You're not really getting that in the Premier League unless you're playing Tottenham. <laughs> Other than that, you ain't getting a high line. So is Osserman the guy that can hold the ball up? Can he, you know, dart across the front stick and flick one in with his head? Now, yeah, can he can he do the pass and move? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not convinced. I'm I'm genuinely not convinced. And I think that the pace of the Premier League is a lot quicker. Yeah, I don't buy into the fact it's the best league. It depends what you class as best. Yeah, it's the most marketed league and most eyes on it. So on that basis, yes, more people watching it. Just because more people are watching it don't make it the best. Just makes it the most watched. But I don't know. I, th I think I'd much rather spend that money on Ivan Tony. I think that Tony is going to come back with a with a point to prove um, after his eight month ban. And I think that um, I think that we could get him for a lot lot cheaper than that. That's for sure. And I think that if he comes into Arsenal, I've already seen enough from him. The fact that he scored 20 Premier League goals last season, third top scorer in the league um, behind Haaland and Harry Kane. You know, and the fact that he's got the bit between his teeth, he's going to want to come back fighting. He's going to want to come and show and prove a point to everybody. The fact that we could probably get him for around 60 million quid. For me, I think that's a no brainer. I think that that's got to be something that we look at and say, right, let's go and get Ivan Tony real quick. Yeah, and let's not forget, he missed the last four or five games of the season. So, I think um, I think that we should be going and getting him. I can't lie. I genuinely think we should be going and getting him. And I think that if we signed him, what he brings to our team is exactly what is needed in our team. Somebody that can hold the ball up, can link play, is a different outlet. Because when we hoof the ball up long from our goalkeeper... Eddie and Ketty is up front, or Jesus, or Martinelli, or or Saka, or Gibraltar guard. The ball just comes straight back. These guys are not going to win many headers. Even twenty nine ain't going to win many headers, despite being six foot four. He ain't winning many headers. So, I think that Ivan Tony is a, a physical specimen, and he's quick, not rapid, but he doesn't need to be. But he's quick in in his brain. Yeah, he's already seen the picture before it happens. The ball comes up, he'll hold it or spin it straight off to Embuemo or to Wissa. Yeah, and it's no coincidence that Brighton, uh, sorry, Brentford have struggled without him in the team. Yeah, because he is key to how they play. Yeah, and that game at the weekend, if Ivan Tony was playing that game, we would have got battered. Let's just have that right. Yeah, them chances they had, we, we would have lost that game. So people can bang on about, oh, but it was uh, uh, unforced errors. Well, no disrespect, but most goals conceded in any football match are down to unforced errors. Yeah, an individual error. Most most of them, even 30-yard screamers, you didn't close your man down quick enough or the goalkeeper didn't move quick enough. They're individual errors. So when people are waffling about the goalkeeper at the week, oh, it was individual errors. That was all they created. We're controlling the games and we're defensively better. Yeah, great. Cool. Whoopee, mate. Yeah, whoopee. Now, we need a killer up front. Yeah, we need somebody that when we're whipping these aimless balls in, when we're doubling up, when they're doubling up on Saka and Martinelli and it's becoming all too predictable and we're going back to Odegaard, back to Rice, back out to Saka, back to Odegaard, back to Rice, out to Martinelli, inside to Jesus, back to um, Odegaard, back to Rice. It is so predictable. And if you've got that outlet up front, which I think Tony would be the better option, he can score headers, left foot, right foot, his movement's impeccable and he can hold the ball up. Yeah, and he is a bagsman. This guy scored 20 goals last season at Brentford. Yeah, and don't let that fool you because the season before he scored 12. Yeah, the season before he scored 12. And to put that into context, Lacazette, who everyone was loving off when he was at Arsenal, scored 14, the most ever. Gabby Jesus, 14, most ever. So let's just have it right here. 
Ivan Tony is a top player and it cost half the money. Yeah, and for me, that's got to be done. I don't care if he's two years older. Yeah, well, he's 27. So, yeah, Osman's 25 in December, two years, two and a half years. I don't care if he's older. I want somebody now that's ready for now, that doesn't need time to adapt, doesn't need to move London, doesn't need to move country, doesn't mean to bed in and all of that. Just walk straight in. He knows that I know Osman can speak English, but walk in. He knows the vibe. He knows what the crack is. He knows what he's going to be doing. Yeah, and he knows, bang, I've got Saka on that side, Martin Nelly there, and Odegaard. Put him up front. He bags for fun. Now, I'm not convinced that um, Osserman does. I think it'd take a lot longer for Osserman to settle into Arsenal than it would for Ivan Tony. But listen, that's just my thoughts on it. Uh, you let me know yours. And um, like I said, if you do watch the Italian league on a regular basis, do let me know. Do you think Osserman is a better player? Listen, maybe he has a higher ceiling, whatever that means. That just means he's been hyped up more than Ivan Tony. Higher ceiling. What does that even mean? I I don't get it. I've got a high ceiling in this apartment. What, what does it mean? But anyway, uh, you let me know. Big up to everybody who has tuned in. Like I said, I've got the um, the podcast coming up at quarter past six UK time. After that, I'll have another video dropping as well. Um, we're probably going to be speaking on that one about um, Aaron Ramsdale lined up for a move on loan to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Uh, of all places, and Thomas Party linked to Juve. So come and join us for that one. That'll be dropping around midnight UK time, people. Uh, so come and check that out. Uh, make sure you stick a thumbs up on the video. Get your comments and super chats in down below. And uh, make sure you check out the videos dropping on the other channel. I'm going to have one out on the other channel very shortly as well. Um, that's going to be talking about Sancho to Juventus. In fact, actually, no, it's going to be about Pochettino. He's been given the dreaded vote of confidence. Uh, so we're going to talk about him. Uh, I'll be doing a watch along on that channel tonight and then I'll have a video out about Sancho uh, to Juventus as well. So plenty more to come, plenty more to come this week. You're going to get bored of seeing my face all over the internet and uh, it is what it is. Listen, we've got to make up for the last week of uh, being ill, man, and um, the best never rest. I still ploughed through the watch along and uh, I'm still here now. So yeah, I'm feeling fit, thirsty, ready to go. And I've lost 5 kg, man. I can't believe when I weighed myself, I could not believe I'd lost 5 kilo. I'm skinny anyway. So this week, I'm going to be bulking back up again. <laughs> Adios, amigos. Ciao. Love.